a dream and vision with the proper tools is all you need to create a new world. Tool? We're talking about Unity. Now, instead of building a game entirely from scratch, there are other possibilities to bring the game, or at least some part of this game, to the platform. Today, we will be exploring those options. You'll find plenty of tips here on how to start making your first video game. Your background or skill set doesn't matter. What counts is your drive to create. Let's consider if you have a game developed by someone off Fiverr or by some developer and they give it to you in the form of an APK file. Now, normally what happens is that you import different assets into a game from Unity's asset store in their own specified format, add in customizations and as you're done, you can export that file in an APK format to use ahead in either Android Studio or maybe to directly upload it to Google Play Store. However, if it's the opposite, reversing the process as well only makes sense. To open that kind of file in the Unity game engine, you will apply reverse engineering and unbuild the file for starters. The files that get unpacked are almost the same as in a standalone build. All your assets, including models, textures, sounds, prefabs, etc., are packed into .assets files, which seem to be in the same format as the generic asset files, so it should be possible to just import them back into a Unity project after you change the extension to Asset. However, besides the .asset files, it will also unpack your Monoscript DLLs. From those, you can recreate most of your code, almost everything except co-routines with a C-sharp reflector like IlSpy, etc. Another way is to use some unpacker tools like DevX Game Recovery, which is able to open game asset files of Win, Mac, Linux, APK, iOS, etc. formats. After unpacking, you can then access all of the scene structures and resource content, including text, images, sounds, meshes, scripts, scene objects, etc. You can access script source code after the decompilation, preview animations, export resources and scripts by converting image assets to PNG, DDS, sound to web, export mesh, animations, decompile assemblies, etc. After that, you can easily generate a corresponding Unity project and integrate it with Unity 3D Editor. Now, once you have your Unity project decompiled and converted, the next step is what you want to do about it or with it. Like, if you wish to make any customizations to it, or if you wanted to add in some more features, or even remove some data, that could be done easily. You can add support for using Unity as a library controlled by native Android, Java, and iOS Objective-C apps that will let you easily insert AR and other Unity features. There are times when developers using Android, Java, and iOS Objective-C and other native platform technologies want to include features powered by Unity in their apps and games. Seeing the rising need for it, it has been included as a feature in the latest versions of Unity, that's Unity 2019.3a2, that enables you to integrate the Unity runtime components and your content into a native platform project so you can use Unity as a library. You can insert features powered by Unity, including augmented reality, AR, 3D and 2D real-time rendering, 2D minigames, and more directly into your native mobile app. For that, you have to perform changes to the project structure. The Unity Runtime Library exposes controls to manage when and how to load, activate, unload within the native application. The mobile app build process overall is still the same. Unity creates the iOS Xcode and Android Gradle projects. However, to enable this feature, the project structure for Android Gradle will be rearranged and is required to be molded to the following. A library part in Android Archive AAR file that includes all source files and plugins. A thin launcher part that includes app representation data and runs the library part. Another way is to export the project as an APK to Android and add in Unity as a library on Android, including basic sample projects. That's basically the same thing with changes in format and platform. And, along with that, there are just a few limitations. In the scenario where Unity is added as a library hosted by a native app, Unity no longer controls the life cycle of the runtime, so it cannot be guaranteed or thought that it will work in all possible use cases. 
Don't get it? Let me make it clear for you. Consider an example that Unity as a library supports full screen rendering only. Rendering on only a part of the screen is not supported. Loading more than one instance of Unity runtime is not supported. Hence, for that, you may need to adapt third-party plugins, either native or managed for them to work properly. It all really depends on your understanding of the architecture of Android Java applications. For more information, visit Skits Gaming today.